to my channel I'm Anna and this is you got me in stitches I hope you've all had a really good week whatever you have been up to wonderful warm welcome to all my new subscribers very much appreciated that you come by in usual time to watch my videos and I think maybe some of that has to do with Michelle from sewing bunny a couple of these recent little influx there because you very kindly mentioned me in your video thank you sweetie that that's really kind of you yeah so I still can't get over that people actually want to come by and watch me yak on but hey ho let me know in the comments below what you enjoy sewing where are you new to sewing are you a professional anything like that right guys I tell you guys what I am wearing and it is a new look pattern and it's K6434 view D and for some of you guys that have been following me for a little while this is the tea that I made with the collaboration with the wonderful Helen from Stitch Rip Repeat at the time of our collaboration. Her channel name was different and it was Bountiful Bows and so much more. The fabric that I chose for this tea is an unglaze, it is a mid-wake so it's semi-structured and I don't know why but I haven't worn this perhaps as much as I thought I would. Again it's a really lovely top and pretty versatile you could team it up with anything but yeah and I like the poofiness on the end of the sleeve there. Sometimes we reach for certain items of clothing in our closet more than others and for whatever reason that's the same with this one. I have this tea teamed up with a pair of jeans today and they're thrifted jeans and they just got a little bit of a vintage vibe and what I will do teenage out there will just add in a couple of steels so then you can see the two one together so it's me just kind of standing up and faffing around and moving the camera angle Anyway guys, less of me prattling on about what I am wearing. What am I doing today? Why am I here? Okay guys, I have four patterns to show you and that piece of fabric. Righto, the first pattern is a Macaws pattern, M7756. Some of you guys might be familiar seeing this on Rachel's channel, which is stitched up and the view that she made, she looked incredible, absolutely beautiful in it. I had seen this pattern quite a while ago. It is, well, I think, a few years old, and then I remembered it again when Rachel made this up. And it's just so beautiful. And again, you have different lengths, so shorts, full length, calf length, yeah, so you can play around with it. And also different lengths and styles for the sleeve, so it's pretty versatile. And again, you could play around with different fabric types as well. Show you guys the line art there. So as you can see from that, there's quite a few ways that you could actually make this pattern up. I would make calf length and full length of the pants. And for the sleeves, I like the sleeves on view D there, but they would actually come down to the ankles. And I think with the top that I've got here, I have made the same shape and style sleeve, but the bell shape sleeve actually just comes down to the elbow. Otherwise, if you have it kind of by the wrist and everything like that, it's just a lot of fabric kind of flapping around everywhere. <laughs> It'd be like, you know, if you're at the dinner table or something, it would go in the sauce. Yeah, not a good look. These patterns that I am going to show you next, I have three of them, and they are from a company called Decades of Style. Now, although I have heard of them before, I have never ordered from them. And 
their theme throughout their styles is very vintage and very me. So let's go. Right now, the first pitting that I am going to show you is a 1933 evening gown and to me it just is so exquisite and elegant looking and the pitting number is 3301 There's the reverse, the line drawings there It looks relatively straightforward I say that very cautiously yes I don't think it's necessarily the actual pitten pieces that are going to be tricky to sew I think accuracy of cutting out and also using the slinky silky satiny fabrics again if they slightly move that is going to put everything out of kilter I think to sew a beautiful gown like this I really will have to up my sewing game on this one but you know I like a challenge yeah I've definitely got a challenge with this one next up is a 1930s sweetheart overalls and they are equally as gorgeous have that utilitarian feel. I like the red and also the green there that they've showed but I don't think I would have fabric with print on it. I would keep it plain and I would go for more of a denim structure to the fabric because again like I just said that kind of utilitarian look I don't think it would work perhaps in floaty fabrics that's kind of not the vibe with these overalls but again you can play around and it, it's personal choice but yeah I like the red I'd make a blue and probably a greyish black denim pair but again see how I get on there are the line art on the back and again I've made overalls before I made the McCall's overalls so I think these are pretty straightforward again to put together but I really like that neckline detail there yeah happy with that well I so the final pattern is 1940s empire waist pants I absolutely adore 1940s it's one of my favorite eras ever and closely following that is the 60s so these are those here and also Rachel for a stitched up she had also made these as well and yeah I just I don't know I think they are very chic looking and because I like the 40s style I have quite a few vintage garments that would work really well with the style of the pants there and also I think you could get away with a, a really good crisp white clean shirt maybe again with a vintage style righto that is it of those four patterns have you heard of decades of style have you ordered from them do you like their patterns overall and the patterns that i have showed you do you have any of those if so how did you get on sewing them and yeah let me know what you think of their style and your creations and everything like that did they come up to your expectations right now isn't there something else left yeah fabric what's well, a video without fabric when i mentioned a little bit earlier when i said about that fabric you guys have already had a sneaky peek from last week's video yeah that's right guys that fabric being, you got it, Lady Mickey. Yeah. Here I life in Venice, and it is a visco chalice, and here it is. I'm so excited. It is so beautiful. Yeah, I am. I'm just so excited. Yeah. So pick me up four yards, plenty of it. 
beautifully buttery soft and drapey. Teenage Athling will very kindly insert the steel for me of the fabric in just a little video pinning down the fabric because sometimes holding it up doesn't always do fabrics justice. This fabric screams to me jumpsuit, absolutely, definitely a jumpsuit, whether calf length or full length. Also, I was thinking of a dress. Can you imagine a beautiful long floor length flowy dress? But then I thought it's a little bit impractical. Now, some of you guys may have remembered when I made the pitch work dress, I actually made a top and a long skirt. So I might do the same with this and then that way I've got lots of extra options so I could just wear the top with pants, jeans, things like that. Again I could just wear this skirt with a different top but again if I wanted to have it as a dress then just put the two together and there you go, a dress. So yeah, but you guys if you have this fabric what have you made in it? Oh I just cannot get over how beautifully buttery soft it is and just a little bit nervous in cutting into it but what can you do? You've got to cut into fabric if you want to make the garments. Bye bye guys, I have yicked on to you probably for far too long again today. Thank you so much for stopping by and spending time with me. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please just hit that thumbs up button. It does help. Let me know if you have any plans this week and what you are up to. Okay, thank you so much. Take care guys. actually look that windy but over the inside there are huge trees and it's there that all the wind is clustering together causing the hissing sound probably yeah I actually hear but the mic is very sensitive there we go again Righto, the first pattern, 